Hello, welcome to Mr B's ukulele channel. Please like and subscribe and I hope you enjoy watching. This is the tutorial video for Freddie Mercury's 1975 hit Bohemian Rhapsody. Now this is a really tricky song. This is one of my new level 6 pieces and it's mainly because of the chords in it. Um, there, are some, there are some tricky uh, bits to strum along to. Uh, but it's really about the chords. So there's a lot of very demanding chord sequences in this piece, which is why I've released a series of uh, Countdown to Queen uh, chord tutorials in the build-up to this video. So have a look at those, and I'll leave a link to those in the description below, and also at the end of the video. So have a look at those, and uh, have a look at those chords first of all. I will recap some of the tricky chords in this tutorial now, and then we'll uh, have a look at the different strumming patterns I use in the song as well, and then we'll have a bit of a look at the layout of the piece and a short demonstration at the end. Now you might have already noticed looking at the piece that this is not the full Bohemian Rhapsody. Um, the, the full song is an incredibly challenging song and uh, on my level scale of 1 to 6, uh, which used to be 1 to 5, would be well beyond probably level 10. The, 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 the amount of really challenging singing that uh, Freddie Mercury does in his original song is just it's truly incredible, uh, but very, very demanding. So I have focused on the main instrumental parts of the song, uh, with a little bit of an uh, instrumental filler in the middle to, or towards the end, and I've taken out some of those really challenging vocal parts uh, that are really for uh, an expert singer, um, not one for me <laughs> to have a go at. Uh, so we'll have a look at the main parts. This is an abridged version, if you like, Mr. B's abridged version of Bohemian Rhapsody, uh, but it makes it a lot of fun to play through, and uh, there's still plenty of challenges for everyone in here. So let's get cracking, let's have a look. So I'm going to start off by just talking through some of the main chords that are a real challenge in this one. Then we'll uh, talk and play through uh, a couple of the verses so we can see where those chords come about and, and the chord transitions that we have to make. Um, so we'll start off. Uh, let's look first of all at the B to B flat sequence because um, that's one we need to really get to grips with for the beginning of the song. Uh, so we have the B flat. Hopefully most of us are familiar with the B flat on this channel. That's first and first finger over the first two strings there, second finger there, third finger there. So it goes up a bit of a diagonal line, but with the double string at the bottom. That's a B flat. And then if you slide the whole thing up one fret like that, that's a B. Same positions on the fingers, but just slide up one fret. B. And we need to go easy come, easy go, a little high, little low. And that's the B, B flat, A, B flat, B, B flat, A, B flat, and you need to spend some time on that. That's a really challenging part of the song, but that is quintessential Queen there, isn't it? Everyone knows that line, so you've got to, you've got to be able to pull that one off. Uh, so spend some time on that. Um, really focus on your B flat chord, because if you can play the B flat, you can play the B, and you need to be able to swap from the B flat to the A and back again quite quickly. So spend some time focusing on your B flat there is the key to learning that passage. Okay, another tricky one is the B flat seven, and that's full finger, first finger across the full first fret, second finger there on the C string there, third one up. Okay, so full finger and second finger on the C string there. Should sound like this, the B flat seven. We'll need that later on. Um, and then a couple of other really nasty ones. We've got the F minor. I really don't like the F minor. It's a really nasty one. Now I've marked it on the uh, diagram that I give my chord diagram. First and second finger like that. First and second finger. So we're doing alternate strings there on the E and G string. And then third finger down here where you'd normally put your uh, third finger for the C. So it's like a C with those two fingers added. However, I find that a really difficult stretch. So although I've marked it like that, I often use my little finger instead, a bit of a cheat. So Mark, you can use your third or fourth finger depending on how comfortable you find that. That's the F minor. Okay, that's quite a nasty one to suddenly find mid-song where there's quite a difficult stretch and to get all those fingers accurately in the right place. Uh, so have a look at that one. Um, another one you might not be familiar with, hopefully we know the E flat and the C minor by now. Uh, e flat is this one. First finger there at the bottom and then third finger on the third fret across the top three strings but not that bottom string because I, I need my first finger to count there. So E flat. 
then to a C minor, really easy, just drop it down. It's the bottom three strings there. So an E flat to C minor is really easy there. So a nice C minor. Uh, we've also got a C sharp diminished seventh, which is in the first verse, which is actually really easy because it's just those two things there. One, two, one, two. First and third string up. Uh, C sharp diminished seventh. It's got a fancy name, but it's a really easy chord to play. Okay, the only other one of note really is the G minor, which you might not have come across before, and that looks like that. One, two, three, G minor. And then we've got two really, really tricky chords, and I really don't like these chords at all, but they sound beautiful when you get them just right, but they're really horrible to play. And they are the A flat minor, and the horribly named and horribly created B flat seven suspended fourth. Let's have a quick look at those two now and then we'll see where they slot into the piece. And the A flat minor is the more challenging one in my mind and it comes up several times in the song which makes it a real uh, nasty piece of work. Right, okay, so for the A flat minor, our first finger goes there on the bottom of the second fret and our second finger goes there on the third string up on the, sec on the third fret and then our fourth, third and fourth finger go on the fourth fret and they go either side of where our second finger is, so the top and the third string down. There we go. So that's first finger on the A string, second finger on the C string, third and fourth on the E and the A string. Have another look at that one, it's really nasty. One, two, three, four, okay. And with a lot of these chords, it's really important, you've really got your hand right out in front of the ukulele, so you can really use your finger points to, um, to press those chords accurately, because if you have your fingers flat, you're gonna hit all the wrong strings and it's gonna sound really bad, so it's really important our hand position is in the right place there. And use your thumb to support the, the wrist as you come around with your hand. Okay, that's the A flat minor. It's a horrible chord, especially a horrible one to get in the middle of the song. So you need to practice that one a lot. And I'll talk about how to practice the transition on that in a few minutes. Um, the other really tricky one is the B flat seven suspended fourth, which is just a horrible chord to even say. And it's a real challenge. Now on the diagram, I've actually put a first finger down for the um, across the first fret like that. But actually it's easier if you get used to playing first and second finger like that. So first finger there on the E string and second finger on the G string on the top. And then on the third fret, we're going to hit the C and the A with our second, oh, with our third and fourth finger. So we're doing that on the first fret, one, two. And on the third fret, we're doing three and four. So we're actually doing all four strings on the first and third fret. It sounds like this. And same as before, you've got to make sure your hand's really out in front of the ukulele so that you're just using your fingertips and you're not flattening your fingers and hitting the wrong strings. It's a really nasty chord. So practice those two chords a lot. The trick to both of those is to slow the piece down before you get near them and then you've got time to adjust your fingers. That is the real secret there. We'll come to that. Okay, so there are the chords. Have a good look at all of those because you're going to need to be able to play them really smoothly before you go on with this piece. Now, the strumming is, uh, is quite nice. It's really light in places, really heavy in others. And really, this piece, you can just do your own versions of the strumming if you want to. You know, this is a, a really creative piece. Really just do what, what feels right for you. But I'll tell you what I'm doing, and you can use that uh, if you want to. So, let's sing through the first part of the song. And I start, it's almost like you're sort of speaking to the camera. It's almost like you're speaking to the audience um, at the beginning of the song. Uh, it's like you're having a conversation. And I start with a nice down up, uh, gentle down up at the beginning here. Is this the real life? Is this just fantasy? Caught in a landslide, no escape from reality. Nice and slow, just down up, down up, down up. Open your eyes. Now I've switched here to a down, down up. Look up to the skies and see. And I carry on with that for a bit. And then when I get to the easy come, easy go, that's just a down, down. Easy come, easy go, let 
little high, little low, back to the down, down, up. Any way the wind blows doesn't really matter to me. Then let it fade away, let it fade away slowly. Then we're going to hit the ground running with down, down, up, up, down, up. Mother just killed a man. You can really shout into this one, but again against this pain. That's the change in style. You can have a lot of fun with that versa. Now in the second half of that one, we get the F minor come up, which is really nasty. Mama, ooh, nice transition there from the E flat to the C minor. It's a lovely transition. Ooh, didn't mean to make you cry. You've got to be really ready with that F minor there. Mean to make you cry. It's really hard to grab that out of the, out of the air there and, and get the position right. If I'm not back again this time tomorrow Carry on and slow it down now Carry on as if nothing really matters Because you've got to find that A-flat minor there You've got to slow the song down and But make it sound natural Because it does naturally slow down there Slow it down so you've got time to find the right fingers for that A-flat minor Then it goes back into the B-flat Matters Then a nice little F7 on the end Bit of a transitional chord back into the second verse, and it's the same again. Too late, my time has come. Now, in the original song, the second verse does finish differently to the first verse, but um, to keep it relatively simple, given all the other difficulties of the song, I have made the second verse exactly the same as the first verse in terms of layout, so the chord sequence at the end of the second verse is the same again. So that's relatively easy. You've just got to nail that F minor and that A flat minor, two horrible chords to transition into. So practice those parts there. And then we get to the instrumental part in the middle and then the ending. And that starts with some lovely chords uh, with just simple down strums on the chords and then we go into a sung ending. So it starts on the E flat. B flat, one down strum for every chord written on the page. C minor, G7 to the C minor again. B flat 7, E flat, D, and the G minor again, and then we're singing. Nothing really matters. Keep the downward strumming going. Anyone can see. Slow it down again. Nothing really. A flat minor matters. B flat 7 suspended. Fourth horrible chord looks like this. Nothing really matters. To E flat, me, B flat, two C sevens, two Fs, and then a down, down up on the B flat. And that is your ending. So it's a really nice slow down at the end. Just let the song fade away and finish with a nice down, down up on that B flat there. Okay, I think we've talked about the layout really as we've gone through it. So it starts off with that lovely sort of semi-spoken or conversational introduction. We've got two verses in the middle that are exactly the same. And then we've got that ending. And the really tricky parts, as I keep saying, are the A flat minor chord in the two verses and also the ending. And then that B flat seven suspended fourth that is also in the ending. So have a good look at those chords. Um, I'm going to finish by just giving you a demonstration of full verse. Uh, I'm going to sing you through the uh, first verse one more time so you can see how the, the song really fits together. And, uh, and then you can have a go at that and do have a lot of fun. It's a great song, great piece. Uh, so do have a lot of fun with that one. Thank you. Mama just killed a man Put a gun against his head Pulled my trigger, now he's dead Mama, life had just begun But now I've gone and thrown it all away Mama, ooh, Didn't mean to make you cry If I'm not back again this time tomorrow Thank you everyone, do take care.